Good evening, everyone. This evening, we celebrate the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. I invite you all to please stand and join with me in our opening hymn, Gather Us In. It's number 302. And in those who know you, you rebuke calamity. 
and they are taken. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attend you, and taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord.
Matthew. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowd, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat, and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slave said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time I will say to the harvesters, First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. The Gospel of the Lord. There is a funny story told about an elderly woman named Agatha Longworth. Agatha had some hearing loss and had the uncomfortable habit of shouting her sins when she visited the confessional in her church. Her pastor was very concerned for her privacy and the sanctity of the confessional, so he suggested she write out her sins each week and hand them to him instead. The next week, Mrs. Longworth handed the priest her list. He looked at it, confused. What is this? It looks like a grocery list. Mrs. Longworth explained, Oh no, I must have left my sins at Stop and Shop. <laughs> well, I suppose we wish we could leave our sins at the local grocery store. We can find our sins and the sins of others all around us. They're like the weeds that grow among the wheat. In 1939, Charles Lawton starred as Quasimodo in the movie The Hunchback of Notre Dame. In order to look the part, Lawton strapped himself into a harness that bent and distorted his back. The first few days that he wore the harness, it didn't affect him very much, but after weeks of wearing it, he discovered that when he took it off at night, that he was having a harder time standing up straight. His spine was conforming to the harness, and it required much greater effort to stand up normally when he removed it. It was bending him, changing him. That's what sin can do. Can it be that we cannot escape the presence of sin and evil in the world, and so what we do is conform to it? We try to redefine what it is, deny what it is, and then do we accept our disordered systems and the distorted lives that we sometimes live instead of standing fully in our identity and in our relationship with God as his children. So what are we to do in the midst of the wheat and the weeds? Well, we come here week in and week out and we hear the word of sacred scripture and very often the gospel we find is Jesus speaking about the kingdom. Jesus speaking about the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. It's one of the great topics of his preaching. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven really is that kind of vision of what we want to be, what we want others to be, what we want the world to be. And I think one thing that our sin does for us is that it stops us and makes us ask the question, is this how I am supposed to be? Is this how I'm supposed to be? It kind of causes us to be humble, to be honest. Is this how life is supposed to be? We know the answer. It's no. It's not the way it's supposed to be. We kind of know it in our bones that we look into our lives, into the broken lives, the broken world, the dysfunctional world, and we try to imagine a better world. We try to imagine a better us. We try to
try to imagine our brothers and sisters in a better way, God has given us that great new vision of creation where sin is destroyed and where creation is restored. That's the plan of redemption. That's the kingdom in our midst. It's the plan that God had when he sent Jesus into the world to begin his ministry, to preach and to teach, proclaiming the kingdom of God. That different kind of vision, the one that calls us to be the best we can be. The gospel concludes with these words, then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. The righteous will shine. When that vision of the kingdom is coming about, when the kingdom is coming into its fullness, the righteous will shine. It's interesting, the Greek word used here for shine is ek lampo, and it's used only once in the Bible, used here in this passage, only once. And apparently it's not used in any other ancient Greek writing. It could be that it was a word that the Gospel writer Matthew kind of invented, that he coined this word to describe the unique role of God's children in the world. Eklampo. It means to shine out from within. To shine out from within. From that which is in us, to shine out into the world. And it's not so far-fetched. We have the Holy Spirit who makes it's dwelling within us. Christ lives in us. And we're called then to shine that light into the world. To shine like the sun. And we do that, I suppose, as we kind of let the wheat of our lives grow. In this life, we only partially reflect that brilliance of the light of Christ. We have our imperfections and we always will. But in the kingdom of heaven, in that kingdom of God, we will shine brightly, we'll be united with God. And Jesus knows that in this life, the, the wheat and the leaves grow together. But he gives us that kind of vision of what it can be and will be as the light shines brighter in us and through us. He gives us that vision and he gives us that promise that God has that kingdom plan for us and that the kingdom itself will reflect the glory of God. Someday, someday we believe that sin and evil, everything that stands in opposition to God will be destroyed and we get a glimpse of that glory as it shines forth in our lives and in the lives of others. It's imperfect, and yet it does reveal to us the glory of God that is alive in us and alive in our brothers and sisters. We see it especially as it is made manifest in kindness, in charity, in generosity, in giving of ourselves. That's where we see the glory of God shining forth. There's a story about a very old church in Israel that was maintained by a community of monks. It was such an old structure that it had no electricity. A worship service was planned for this church and for the first time was going to be televised. So the television crew showed up and brought in their equipment and that included these very, very bright lights for the cameras. When they tested the lights, the monks gasped because unbeknownst to any of them, the ancient church had a beautiful mural painted on the ceiling. Centuries had passed without anyone knowing that this work of beauty was hiding just overhead. And it was only in the presence of the light that the beauty was revealed. In the presence of the light of the heavenly kingdom, so much will be revealed to us. For now, for now we get a glimpse through the weeds.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. As we strive to live our faith in this world, let us bring our petitions to the Lord. For Pope Francis and all who lead the Church, that they may be open to the guidance of the Holy Spirit in the decisions they make for the good of the Church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocations, the priesthood, and religious life, May our young people be generous in their response to the voice of the Good Shepherd. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all innocent victims of the violence throughout the world, may all nations come to the aid of those who seek peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those we remember through our St. Bernard's circle of prayer, for those impacted by the coronavirus and for peace in Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died, especially deceased members of the Gaffney and Moriarty families, for whom we offer this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We do remember this weekend young people gathered in Springfield for the Steubenville East Conference for God's blessings upon them. Almighty Father, in sending your Son Jesus, you have opened up the way to eternal life. May we always follow him and live and work for the glory of your name. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end to be a plain. Church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Bernard, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, we remember the deceased members of the Gaffney and Moriarty families. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever.
takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank you always for your generosity, for your weekly contributions. The baskets are at the doors and the bulletins there. Mark your calendars, August 19th, Parish Picnic after this 5 o'clock Mass. October 1st, our third annual St. Bernard's Golf Tournament. We received a thank you from the North Kingstown uh, Food Pantry. We put it in the bulletin, but I wanted to mention to you, since January, they send it, I guess, twice a year, since January, we have donated 2,460 pounds of food. That would include the Super Bowl donations. But your weekly donations of food that you bring in, thank you for doing that. It adds up and goes to the North Kingstown Food Pantry and is very, very important uh, for them. You may have seen when you drove in the, uh, the lift uh, that's in the parking lot. Uh, so we think we're starting finally on the project to paint the church. They were here today power washing the front of the church. So the, the, the front of the church was power washed today. They'll continue with that power washing the church and then they'll start with painting it. So it was rather interesting to see the lift go up to the highest peak of the church. And we thought that should be reserved for one of you to do that. We thought maybe the one who has the closest birthday, so I won't ask who that is, but I'll see what I can do about getting you the ride and the lift up to the peak of the church. I don't think I want to go up there. But the work, I think, is beginning, so if we get a few days of sunshine, they'll be able to do what they need to. And all of that is really due to your generosity again and our maintenance collection, trying to keep our, our physical facility in the best condition we can. So thank you for that. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. And as we go forth, I invite you all to join with me in our recessional hymn, Take the Word of God with you. It's number 382. 